Kush. <laughs> 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 <
uh, okay. Any language thoughts or questions? Uh, yeah. oh, sorry. I don't know why I did that. Just a habit, force a habit. <clears throat> I have one. But I, I turned them. I unmuted them on my computer. Oh. <clears throat> um, so I asked, uh, so last week one of my students was asking me how to say kangaroo and finget. But I asked you that towards the end of class. And so since I have the rest of the class here, maybe if somebody remembers, because I remember somebody, I think maybe, Gune, you, you maybe told us something about kangaroo, but it, you couldn't remember what it was. So anyway, what I'm doing now is opening it up to the rest of the group to see if anybody either remembers a word for kangaroo or knows of one or has one down. But I remember somewhere, somebody unveiled it. I don't remember who or how, but... Um, yeah, anyway, just a thought. Anybody hear a kangaroo name? I thought it had to do something with the pouch or the pocket or something, but I, I may have been wrong. I think we were just brainstorming, if, if I remember right. You'd say, um, Kashtut. Kashtut. Wasn't it something about a, a pocket for the baby or? A... Yeah, like. um. Yeah. I think it's a kashtut yit uchkan. Okay, there's, there's this interesting thing that happens with some of these verbs. Um, let me see if I could very find it. Okay. Keep talking. If you remember anything, keep talking. I'm going to pull up the verb list and look at something, and then... I thought it was one in one of these classes, maybe last year. It was last year. I remember it. I remember us talking about it. Would I ever be able to find it in my notes? No. Well, that's <laughs> too. I thought I went back and wrote it down, but in my notes I couldn't find maybe... It was in another notebook or something. I couldn't find it. So anyway, I thought maybe somebody else had written it down or flagged it or something. Hmm. May have remembered. Well, and I, I was, and I think I remember Hune that it was like one that you wrote down for us when we were talking about it. But at that point, we weren't collecting and saving our notes. Not as, not as diligently as we are now. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah, Gashtu is a pocket. Um, and then, oh, what was I looking for? I know, okay, hold on. I'm trying to uh, walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. Or was it walk and like drink, drink a soda or something? I can't do it. Um, so let me open the verb list. 
And it's, it, let's, so there's this thing that happens with some verbs, and I'm going to see if I could find this example, where the repetitive, a repetitive version, uh, okay, I know I've heard it. Okay, so they don't have, okay. There's, there's this example, let's see, how am I going to find it? Where the repetitive, oh, I know what I'm trying to okay. I'm trying to talk and think and, and look at my computer at the same time. Okay, so I will find it here. Uh, I got I got a new computer, so I'm still working on all the books. But so here you have ye shad <clears throat> So there's something that goes on with some of these verbs, uh, and maybe it's not a repetitive form. Maybe it's like when it's happening right now. I don't know where you get this uh, underline x, and then you're going to get. Uh, you're going to get a short high vowel, you're going to get an underline, and then you're going to have this at the end. Pops up. Like it's a, it's a very unusual verb suffix. Uh, but it pops up here. And so I think this is where you would say, um, to come up with, it keeps its, puts its baby in a pouch. You'd say, I would probably say a uh, toot or a uh, uh, ye uh, Because what's really wild about this suffix for me is do you know what this verb root is? For shada uch. But you know, I guess this. What do you? What's the wearing the clothing verb? Putting something on. Something over the head. I mean. Well, I'm just saying. What's the verb root? Ooh. You, ooh. Ooh. It's ooh. Ooh. Right. Mm -hmm. So you get a double suffix here. And the first time I think I noticed it was Dasya. She said something like "tuk da at ye hua uch kun." Maybe it was like so long. And then she put "shingit hua achch." So like I, I was hearing Klingit from the time I was wearing diapers. But maybe it was just, I don't know if the dech was on there or not. I have to see where I wrote it down. But so I think you'd say, Aqashtuch ye a'uch. But I'm going to have it's Dukani, Dukani Aqashtu ye a'uch ki. Maybe. Okay, there's there's our first proposal. I gotta run it by some I'll run it by some speakers and see what they think. I thought maybe it was in some of that tippy tap stuff we did, but I don't think so. Wait, that means baby in the pocket? It means it keeps its it keeps a baby in its pocket. Oh, okay. But it is uh is could Tukanei be Reference more other than a human baby? <clears throat> or, or I mean, <clears throat> that's a really good question. Okay, so I've, sometimes we get into these areas where I have a theory 
and then it's hard to prove the theory. So one of the, one of the theories I have is for an animal, it would be yeti until it gets, until it's done with the mama milk. Then it goes to katsuku until it's fully grown, and then it just goes to the thing. Like tsik yeti, tsik katsuku, tsik. So tsik katsuku would be the ones you see walking around, but you think mama might be nearby. Yeti is you don't see them leave the mom because it's too dangerous. So everywhere they go, the mom is there. Um, but then I don't know about just like a really tight, like when, I guess it would still be Yeti. So I guess you could say a Yeti a Kartuch ye a Uchi. So then saying that, is that meaning that Tukunei could not be used for something other than human? Maybe or not. You, you still, you don't know I don't it? think so because it means the thing that uses the cradle board. So I'm glad you brought it up. But I don't think, I don't think a dog can have a tukuni or a, a kangaroo. Yeah. We just have a yeti. Because mm -hmm. when we did, um, this is where we can get, uh, like we'll look at some of these sentences from Shakshani and Kahuan Ish about puppies, and those can show us, I think, a few things. Uh, let's see what I'm trying to do. You see Skadeu's comment about the other. Yes, we'll get to the hind quarter. I think I got the. Oh, no, no. Yes. About kangaroos. Oh, really? Yeah. I think it's like a giant rabbit with a bag or something. <laughs> if you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So it's probably uh, not an underline. So you could probably say, uh, if we were to do, if we were to go with that one, which I think is great. So we would go with, uh, oh, wait, let me make a document with notes on it. Hold on. Okay. Uh, so here was that one, and then here was that one, Oops. and then so you would have, so this is interesting too, okay, so here's another thing. This is something that I believe, I don't think Chut and Yubu are the same thing. What what do you folks think the difference is between these two? But I mean, it's Johnny Marks. We're gonna do. I think one is the like just sort of a general belly, and then the other is the stomach. Yeah, I think this is an abdomen, um, <clears throat> and I think this is a stomach. Um, but in this, because Hoot is a whirlpool, yeah? So I think, but if you went with that, I think you could probably have Um which could be pretty fun. Uh, maybe we could just call it that, which would be, uh, bag on its stomach. You is like the abdomen. But I haven't gotten like full clarity on that. Just like I haven't gotten full clarity on that whether an animal could have a kutsuku. One speaker said no. Another speaker said yes. So I definitely like the giant rabbit instead of hopper. Yeah, I had an uncle named Kachtlein, but he swore he got real mad at me if when I asked him, if, is that Big Bunny? He said, no, but he didn't tell me what it was. But I'm not gonna go against him either. He was one of my, he was one of, oh, he was fun to learn playing it with. He was pretty. He said, is that gigantic, awesome rabbit? 
Is that a big bunny? Yeah, well, I was initially thinking like a Kushagawu. You ever see those things in my fight? <laughs> They're like serious contenders. Yeah. They're all jacked, some of them. Not all of them. Some of them are just, I don't know if that's like Photoshop or what, but I saw pictures of one. I was like, I think it's terrifying. Breaking my wallet and run away. Okay, yeah, okay. And then I think there was another question in the chat about um, well, I yeah, so as far as like well, um, is the question about the packing or about the hind quarter? Oh, because, yeah, Qadzi, you've got that right. So, Zisku Qadzi, which I would probably write as two words. Um, zisku Qadzi. So, that would be the hind core. Uh, and then, as far as the ken part. So, you can say, like, let's go look at the verbs. Let's go look at, now we'll go look at the verb list. Uh, which would be Gursa. Oh, here it is. Okay. So we're looking for the verb to pack. And Gursish, cheat roof here, example, using that. It's a double suffix on a verb. It's wild stuff. But that same, I do see it sometimes in like a, it's kind of a perfective, or imperfective, I don't, I don't really know. I haven't studied it that much. But it's, I popped up in a Gold Belt Heritage Foundation ad where they have wushin hada'ach. So it, tied, it binds us together. Um, okay, so we're looking for chalk. So I asked multiple speakers about how do you say I can do something. And I don't know if you folks have ever tried it, but every single time they came back with just a simple first person future, which was wild. Like, and so I, I don't, I guess you could say, well, there was something I said earlier. Okay. So I guess maybe we can get there. We might have to find a different way to say it, but this is something we might ask a speaker as well. So earlier, it took me a couple of tries to say this, but I said, Hech dasa um, ha jikai jikai yanach. Oops. Udash tru kayavuj in. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. Yeah, because I think the way that I was trying to go for it is I was trying to do the opposite of there's no way I can mm -hmm. um, and switch it to like I can using the opposite. I thought somebody showed me how to do that once and that was what I was trying to execute, but because, I mean, well, I guess there's this thing, like, I've never done before, but I believe that I can. And then there's another type of thing where you're saying, I do this on the regular, right? So I guess it depends if you've done it or not. It would be the big thing. Because I think there's different ways we could probably get there. So this... Um, I think this is related. So what is this phrase saying? And then I'll get back to the Ziskukatsi. Is the jikayanach is I 
like Will Packet? No, it's a little different. Okay. Anybody know okay. Jan? It has to do with Jan. Through or no? No. But so you sure. There's these two things that are related but opposite things. Yanach and Kin. Anybody hear those things? So I think we've used this before if we said uh, Kate, Dush, Yanach, Hidash, uh, or Hidash. Right. What is that saying? This is usually the case. Dogs are over cats. Well, what's the verb? What's the verb saying? Kedush. Dogs are stronger than cats. Well, you, dogs, we, dogs are heavier than cats. Yes, because if we said douche ya nach and now the cats now they're going to start pumping iron, looking like that big kangaroo because they're mad now. But yeah, so ya nach is more than. Uh, it gets a little, in, it gets really interesting when you go switch it to kaya nach. That means um, you're more, it's like more of the same thing when compared to one. I don't really know how, I'd have to think about how to explain that a little bit better. But jikaya nach is more than the hands. So when you say ach jikaya nach yadash, it's too heavy for me to carry. So I think it has a very interesting way to get to that kind of statement, right? Because you could, then there's other ways you could do that. You could say, and then whatever your carrying verb is going to be. I, I can't lift it. I can't carry it, right? And so you could say, and so this is saying, Nothing is too heavy for us when we work together. Um, that was my metaphor for the evening because we're doing this big language stuff with these three stories. And I've got a fourth one I think we're going to do. Maybe we'll do them after, but it's going to be a slower pace and a, um, with someone that we know. Um, okay, so I think there's a couple ways you could do this. So if you could say... Um, I have never done it, but I think I can. I would probably say, Yehua Ji. Zisk Kazi. But I would say, Kukwaya. I would probably use this verb. Um, I guess, how do you carry it? We got no moose, we got little deers. We carry a whole thing. We have to cut it in force, we carry the whole thing. Yeah. You, so the I'm so to give you context, I'm translating the song like by Miley Cyrus, like I can buy myself flowers, but it's gonna be like I can <laughs> I can pack my own hindquarters. So it's like saying that you've already done it, then you're just like going to do it, and that's like more kind of like the independence thing. But you're packing it on your shoulder, usually oh. across the back of your shoulders. Yeah, so that that would be a cook for ya thing. So carry it on oh. the. Beat. So kakakwachak would be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stack them up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pack okay. them. If you're going to like load them into something, then yes. Uh, and I, I'd have to think, I sing that song to my daughter just to drive her crazy. Um, and I do it in a very silly way. Uh, but I have to work with her on it. And so, uh, but that's amazing. So... Say I can do something. It's so interesting because I've never, like I'd say, I can ride a bike. And they'd say, I'm going to ride a bike. That's just every single time. At, like all the speakers I worked with, they would just come back with the. So the other way you could do this is you could say, ach, tuch, with the chish. And then you would do this. Well, you'd probably do it for either for both of them. So we're going to relative. We're going to put the second one in a subordinative form. So I believe I'm going to pack that 
moose hind quarter. And then I believe it's possible for me to pack that. Um, and then uh, if you're just working with supreme confidence, you say, I'm going to do it. Right? And so I think for Tlingit, that's just how you do those things. Because I think in Tlingit, it's probably a mentality thing where it's like, you got to tell yourself you're going to do it, and then you're just going to go, and then it might turn out you can do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> there you go. Okay. Little cheese. Oh, gonna cheese. Okay, I have one more. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's a phrase that it was like, I just put it in the chat. Um, it's in the song where it's like, I talk to myself for hours, but I, I'm trying to say I talk to, like, creator for hours. So I'm trying to like indigenize the whole song, but um, yeah. So I just try to do the like repetitive format of it. Um, so see. Oh yeah. Um, well, it depends. Okay, we always get into this question and I'm not gonna give you a right or wrong. So Hashaginya is different than the Ki and Kavu. So if you are, you can indigenize and indigenize, or you can indigenize and Christianize. And it's up to you. Choose your own adventure. But Daki and Kawu comes from Christianity. And Hashaginya is our old term. So I, I would say Hashaginya in um, you would be I'm talking. Because you akacha Nick would be I keep telling them this thing. Right, it's a it's a facts or information, but yuchach atunk is I am talking. But then for hours you get, of course it gets long with Tlingit. Kun gachak kanachsa is for hours. But you can also just say chak chak hashaginit. I probably say teen there because it ends with a vowel. But in that wow. mind, Miley Cyrus melody. Yeah. I was like, how am I going to pull this off? <laughs> okay. Going to change. Well, you just, I think for Tlingit, you have the Nakhtari factor. So you can move the words around. So you have Hashagini team. And then you have Chak. And then you have Yukhachatunk. Those are your three parts. You can shuffle them around. I think Chalk probably has to go first, though. Maybe not. Awesome. That'd be fun. Okay, you'll have to sing it for us. We demand a performance. You get an A for the whole semester. That's right. Probably. A, the G day. <laughs> okay. okay, anything else? Anything else? Any other songs being translated right now? Okay, I found what Pidach is. My goodness. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to uh, number one. We'll do number one for a bit. Then we're going to jump to number two, uh, and then we'll probably save number uh, three for Wednesday. Wednesday's class, I'll be teaching from Albuquerque. Just so y'all know. Um, okay, so I think what I'll do is just to get our minds primed for for this. Is I will just play it up until the point. Uh oh. Okay, are you still there? Am I still here? I see you. Okay, let me know if you folks hear this online. Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> Can you hear that? Everybody online, can you hear that? Ah. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. It's left me in suspense there for a moment. Okay. Yet, I got an guy that I do the quartet. Yeah, yeah, that.
Yet was Sago Kaya and Chicago Cook. Quanatsk Quanatsk Quanatsk, good to a sock. Shut the shut coat. Akayo. Ta ayo and I was sick of Ta Chaikawe has a skis Chaik Wan and Isa Taya did do go away. Is this one or is this three? This is one. Okay. Now, Kunz. You left off in Kunz. I was thinking if you were starting at the beginning of one that we would hear Kunz, but you're in the middle somewhere. You're a minute in. Oh, weird. Okay. Oh, I think also it's not showing. This is three. It's not showing what you're showing. Okay. okay. I see what's going on. I see what's going on. I mean, there's like, it's, it's something okay. frozen. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Hold oh, on. Yeah. Oh, I was good. sharing one and playing a different one. Okay. Really happy. Oh. It was moving. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so let me save and close oh, three. <laughs> let me save and close two. And now I think. Okay, that looks like number one. <laughs> I think this is number one. How about this? Yeah, okay. 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 Interesting. Okay. So we were doing some work, Jeet Wu and I were working on some Milan files, and uh, we're messing around using this subtitle feature, which I'm going to try up here. So you can watch it go by down here, or you can watch it up here. It should work either way. Kunt <laughs> Ta, 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 tan, tan. Yet there was a chakwa. Ta, 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 she cha. What ta? Yes, ka. A quats who tie it. Yeah, it was a spear. Shaput. Okay, so this is where we left off. Uh, I think what we should do now is I will we'll listen to the whole thing, and I'm just going to segment this. I'm going to create our segments, then we'll come back through here at 127. That way we can just listen to the whole thing. And then we'll come back and sort of reflect. So it allows us to be in Tlingit for uh, a few minutes and then to come back and see what we're hearing. Shaput. Oh, okay. How is it if you are? Kaha, Kai Kasike. I guess I missed that. Hold on. Now I need a new plan. This one? Is that right? This one? Shaput. 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 
go like this. Chapot. Chapot. No, I think maybe it's like this. Underline G, which isn't really showing up together. Is there an A after the H? Oh, yes, there is. And the G's. I have a theory on what that might be. But let's just, let's stroll over to our noun database and just see what we find under <laughs> shop. Let's see if there's something. <laughs> It's a lump head. <laughs> I think they're also called shakuns. If we're talking about food. It's a lump head food wise. Oh, well, let's see if there's anything in the notes. Why would there be? Let's see. A big headed person. Interesting. Mm -hmm. A lump head. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, um, big head. So I wonder, um, it, now we sort of jump around here. So if that's what he says, uh, I think this is, um, this is a, like a type of spear. So I think it's like that. Um, there's fish that have big lumpy heads. Well, the closest I've heard is, it's called shakuns. That's how I've usually heard it. But I bet you shakut is the same thing. And it seems to be specific to the deer. Like, I don't know if you really refer to moose mm -hmm. this way, but it's when they're just getting the lumps on their head when they're, they're like, if you had shakuns or shakut, uh, if it's what I'm thinking, then what you're saying is uh, ain't big enough to shoot it yet. Because you go for a male deer, but you go for ones that have their antlers more developed. So it's kind of a maturity stage. That's what I would guess. It just wouldn't make sense then for a moose, then, would it? I mean, if they they lose their antlers. Yeah, because they're different. Can, you know. Deer don't lose their antlers? Yeah. Yeah, they keep, that's why you get the big, if you got a big one, it's like a pretty rare find. I know. But, you know, and so it's like, so it's interesting. Um, that's probably why it has, because you have, sh I've heard it as shakuns, shataka, shakshakish, and shakshatsao. And so you've got, but, and I don't know, I don't know if that's what he's talking about here, because I haven't heard it as lumphead before. But, uh, <laughs> you have potato head. <laughs> Spearhead, and then you have barbecue fork head, and then you have crab a head. Crab head is go get them. So I missed that one. Okay, so we went through this. Okay, where did we leave off then? Well, I guess we've done a whole bunch of this. Oh, I guess right here. Okay, let's just go one at a time. What the heck? We're going to consistently hear him say du hua, or we're just going to write du ha. It was pretty common for old time speakers whenever they do any sort of <laughs> there's going to be a W at the, coming out the other side. And why is that? I think that's how it used to be. So you want to lose that? Even though that's what's here, mm -hmm. we want to lose it because if that's the way it used to be, and then, so are we just jumping over to what? What is, what is now? I mean, or instead of what used to be? I don't know. I mean, it's just so that, like that's a really good used to be. I, I don't know. I mean, at some point, I guess you can go back further and further and further, and it used to be something else, and, and you know, way back. Right. And then it. it migrated or changed or, or, or whatever but <clears throat> I, I don't know is this the time in the timeline zone of 
you know, Clinkit language inception to, you know, current and future that that there's a marker that says, okay, we're losing the W. Uh -huh. I mean, that, 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 but we that, lost that, the W. Yeah. It's gone. And so if our intention is to bring it back, then I would say to document it. If our intention is to have a something that's people can read it and not get confused, then we do it. But we could we could easily do it. Like there's different ways you could take care of this too. So, and so if you're publishing something, and we talked about this at a language meeting in March, is our our preference is to write it as we hear it. Right. So for example, so I would say, uh, what are the three words that are here? Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. This is where it's going. Yeah, do sing it. But there is no hua verb root. Like it just does not exist. And so, and even at his particular era, I bet you if you listen to 90% um, of the speakers who said this, they would say du ha. And so it is a standardization question. And so if your intention was to say, okay, because I, I do think this was probably an Angoon thing, because if you listen to Robert Zuboff, he does this quite a bit. If you listen to speakers of this era, if you listen to like that, if you really listen closely, I think, to that because we cherish you and the back and forth, when it starts getting to this back and forth between Charlie Joseph, who's from Sitka, and George Davis, who's from Angoon, you're getting one that has a little bit more of that than the other. And so if the intention is to capture that accuracy, then yeah, you could write it that way. But if I was doing it, I would just write to ha. But you know, I, I, I can see the argument for both sides. I think the if you're talking about differences between places, that almost verges on dialect. And that's mm -hmm. one of those things that has a place in some contexts, but not in others. Right. And if we're striving for wide intelligibility, then you don't want to do that. You want to standardize. But if you're trying to capture the subtlety and the variation, then you want to keep that. And, you know, there's different things you can do here. Like, so you could sort of put that on there. Um, or you, you might use a different symbol because sometimes people use that. Oh, I can't do it. I gotta install some other things on this, on this new computer here. Um, if you folks don't have it, if you work in Slingit all the time, if you've got 40 bucks to spend, there's a program called Popcar, P-O-P-C-H-A-R. And what it does is it puts a little tiny icon on the top left of your screen, and when you push it, a little window pops up and you can put all kinds of special characters in there, mm. including uh, Unicode, um, what do they call them, subscript numbers. So you could put a little tiny number one in here. But one thing that you could do is you could come through and just use an asterisk for now. And that's not saying there's it's improper. All that's saying is come back later and make a note. And then you have, you have a decision to make. One option, is you write it as du hua, and then in the note you say most speakers would say du ha here. We're capturing the accuracy of this speaker. We're, we're trying to accurately capture the speaker. The other option is you write du ha, and then you put a note that says he actually said du hua, which is we believe is a regional dialect thing. So I think it's a regional variation more than a dialect because it's it, it's there, but it's not really there all the time. Okay, and what does, it, what does it mean? The things the clinkets eat. There's one other word in there. We're good. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you might say. Food. I don't know how we want. Yeah, there's different ways we could say it. Right? 
Ask is black seaweed. Yeah, how, how do we spell this one again? Eight. L A A K underline U S K. Shark ask. Shark ask. Check out. Let's check. Okay, this is weird. Because, like, when I share a document, it shares the program, but it brings me to a different document. <laughs> like, not the one I'm sharing. It's like, okay, you'll figure it out, little computer. You'll get there. Your cookie dog. The baby can get learner too. What's that? The baby can get learner too. That's right. Kashuk Takayedin. He's a shabkask. Okay, can I cheese? Okay. Here, can I? Here, can I? Here, can I? Okay, come back to this. Oh, baby steps. Just remember the question I've had for weeks. Okanei Kashyasi. Try slowing it down. Half speed. Any thoughts? Maybe this. I'm hearing an X at the beginning and then A rather than E. <coughs> X at like he like Hakanach. Like that. I'm not I'm not hearing the E the A vowel though. Uh, maybe, maybe even an H. Hey, Ganach. Hey, Ganach. Hey, Ganach. Is he saying with Greece? So that would be ache. B E I or E E. Like oh, Ganach, like that. Hey, Ganach. I, I, well, Echnach would be through the grease. Okay, we'll put a question mark on it. I'll move 
Kaç. 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 Red ribbons. Okay. Let me check my double check my seaweed spelling here. So is that the same thing as red seaweed? I think so. I might say black seaweed. Uh, oops, red seaweed, black seaweed. Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, what? There he is again. What's up? Yeah, yeah, what? Hmm. What do you think he says next? Any predictions? Then you get. Then you get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're nailing it. Nailed it. Did he really just say, yeah, 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 do what? Yeah, yeah, do what? I think so. It sounds like there's a, almost a bit of a consonant on there, but I, there's a lot of clicks on this tape. Yeah, yeah, do what? How are we going to translate this, folks? Slow it down. Slow it down? Oh, you want me to slow it down? Just a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To what? Oh, Is it a short A? Yeah. Yeah, to yeah. what? And if, like, our work right now is just sort of going through and seeing what we're hearing. Like, what we'll do when we finish one, the first one that we finish of these, I'll show you a bunch of ways to export them. Once you pull it out of Elon, you might actually start changing it quite a bit when you can see it all together. And you could do it in Elon as well. Um, but, like, you're sort of, like, getting, this is like a, it's like you're roughing out your carving with a chainsaw right now. And then you're going to come through and get all your detail work later. And yes, we work with chainsaws. There's nothing wrong with that. It's our tradition. How are you? <clears throat> How are you? <clears throat> this is starting a new thing. And you, can, you, you have speakers who say, uh oh, what? And uh oh, you. How do you folks, if you folks have been translating, how do you folks like to translate that? Uh, like it's a narrative device, right? Uh oh, what? Uh oh, what? Then? Yeah, because uh, like a uh, uh, away is a little different than uh oh, what? I guess I would say that is it, maybe. This is one that uh, 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 uh,
I think about them all. I don't know why. They're so tiny. They're such little tiny things. But they're tiny. Every time I run into one, I was like, how do I usually translate that? That's how you literally translate it, too. Yeah. Like, that is it. And then it's just sort of like priming the mind for the next thought, I think. Akaya kochika. Akaya kochika. Akaya kochika. Akaya kochika. Akaya Kochika Akaya Kochika Akaya Uh, what's the next thing? Yeah. I would say there's three words here. <clears throat> Kaya. Kaya. Ka. 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 Mm. I do hear kuch. Yeah, kuch. Kuch siga. And so, something along these lines, but I would expect that to be an A. And maybe even a double A. But I don't know. Akaya kuch tika. And let's go, but let's go see. But this might be. But we can also just say, okay, I'm hearing like a U there. Akaya kochika. I might be hearing something like that as well. Which would mean. Akaya kochika. Akaya kochika. Ya kochika. Okay, let's go look for ziga. See what we could find. We are going to go into the verb dictionary. And it doesn't. Doesn't pop up on my screen. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, so let's go for ga. Not a lot of things popping up here. Do ya ga, kaya ga, tukaya ga, kasha ga. Okay. Let's try another source. Let's go to these verb notes, the reformatted version of the verb notes. I'm going to make this a little bigger here. We're going to go to ga. So we, we're in the slack tide, making them wait. It's not the right one. Kauchaga, kaudaga, scatter. Yakaudaga. We don't have a yakaudziga. But I bet you, I think this verb would be <clears throat> a kayakaudziga. Which I. So because I know this verb, and I also know... Could it be the one that comes after? The guy. Guy. I think that's a different... This is a different verb root. I think this verb root is G-A-Y. So what's interesting is there's... There's a, there is a verb that's not documented in this that's in the verb dictionary. If we want to go see it, um, it's yan kaushaga, to put up foods for the winter time. So that means there must be a yakaudzaga 
which would be, I would think, the act of harvesting foods to, with the purpose of storing them. Now, when we talk about gathering foods, there's this uh, in verb, which would be to put things into a container, is really what it means. And that works for berry picking, picking seed, anything you pick and put into a container. You know, whether that's a pillowcase or a basket, it doesn't matter. It's still saying to gather, you know, if you're going out mushroom hunting, you're going out to get, um, it would probably work for a whole bunch of different foods that you pick up and you put into a container. But this ga has to do with distributing and putting up foods for the purposes of, you know, this filling up the pantry. And in the olden days, filling up the cash. And so I, I, I would think it's referring to the act of gathering foods. But whenever you do this work, one of the big challenges is you bring you. One is every speaker has different ways of talking. Different regions have different ways of talking. And if you're going to go with full-on shingit, you're quite likely going to encounter some undocumented verbs, which is what I think that's what's going on here. So I would... I like that. Akaya kachtzaka. But of course, like I'm saying it with my own accent as opposed to the speaker here. Which again brings us back to other questions about do we standardize it or do we write it as the speaker is saying it? So I would say. Something like that. And then he does it with his father. Okay. So it's interesting work. Like even like it's it's not it's monumental work. Like this is our version of you've been studying art for a long time, now you gotta carve a wall screen. Right? So this is some of the biggest, most substantial work that you could do in Shingit. And just in terms of like pushing yourself and really trying to get it. Um, as I mentioned, recording two, uh, I didn't save it, so what did I do? I went back through and did it again. Mm -hmm. And this, I believe, means the, this is the name, this is my theory. This is the name of the great flood. And it's not just my theory, I found it in someone's notes. <laughs> Well, how do, how do you come up with that as being your theory or from the notes? Well, I think because I found it and it just says <laughs> great flood. <clears throat> but I don't know anybody who can explain that name to me. So this is one to ask a speaker. It's like, are, have you heard this term? Kidach. <laughs> and this is him saying it. Kidach. <laughs> Kidach. <laughs> Where did, where did you hear it documented at? You said you, you, you read it somewhere or, or Someone made notes about this recording. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. It's a kidach, the flood. Wow. But it, it didn't say anything other than that. It just said that's what he's talking about here. Okay. Uh, so I think we got to hear maybe. This, okay, this is really interesting here. Like, this is one I, I wrote, and I'm going to have to come back. And then I actually found out today. No, I'm going to, should I tell you? Okay, I have to tell, okay. I'm going to have to go call the people at the archives and tell them at the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute archives. And I'm going to put you guys on a list and say, if any of these people call you for this information, tell them it's chakas for now. Um, I do believe that this has been transcribed and translated before. And I'm going to get that version, and then when we're done, I'm going to compare our notes. This will be fun. Okay. So listen to this. I, I do believe he's saying Nahude, and Shaudinak would be like, it was, it was stood up. It was like someone 
when I think of it, it's like someone made it stand up. Someone stood it up and it's like they, they lifted it um, almost like a small totem pole or something. Like you grab it by the top part and you stand it up. That's what I think this is talking about. But I don't know, this is one I, I don't have a lot of confidence with, if we slow it down. So I don't know if Nahu, like it sounds like Nahu, Nahu day, but I don't know what that would be unless it's a place name. And there are some places with like Nahu in it. And so it could be, it could be something like on the who day, like, because I think we hear it in the second one too. So I'm going to listen to it again and see. I do think this is probably something more like this. Um, I, but I don't know. I, that's, that's something I have questions with. I hear the SH in it. I had to create the who the show did not. Not there though. No, I mean I hear it in the verb. Yet to create the who the show did not. Something like on the who day or on the who day on, but I don't know what the no who could be, unless it's some kind of name. And then like whether this was really tish and peace. So it sounds like, well, it's not making any sense to me right now. So this is all question marks. That sounds like and then it was scattered. Then it is scattered there. Then we get this cool part here. Not there. Not there. Catch what that is. Not there. Not. That's what that's what it sounds like to me. Not there. Not there. As far as writing that one down, that one seemed pretty. That man over there, that former shaman, he was, he was a shaman over there, or the shaman was over there. Kita, you do a sock. There it is again. Kita, you do a sock. Akayo. Akayo. So he, he says this a couple times, which I think is something with like this is in there. Because you're going to hear this similar thing, which is giwe, right? And so giwe, like if the, the places you're going to hear that a lot is if you're telling a story, you might say, gi twinkwe you do a sock, right? So if we looked at these two, uh, these two things, like if we were to say these things, we could say, eat wing, you do a song, and eat wing, give way, you 
do a sock. What is the difference between these two? Doesn't Iwe imply that there's a little bit of doubt? Yes. As in they might have been called. Yes. Dwayne, maybe they were do they were called. Right, so Giwe it poses a little bit of of maybe, perhaps. And you're gonna see it sometimes it'll stack up with a whole bunch of different things. It'll say Askiwe, it'll get real long. And that just I think means a little bit more uncertainty. As far as what that first part is. Something like Mm. What that first part is. To listen to it. Yeah, I was shy of pot. Yeah, I was shy of pot. Yeah, I was shy of pot. There was a W on the end of that, at that car. Yeah, I was shy of pot. Last thing to translate for the evening. Let's see our saw. Is he was called or yeah? Well, you. You have ye do a sock or you do a sock, which is related, right? But if you say ye a was sa. Is it like uh, he named him or she named him? Yeah, so that means this is the verb for someone to name something. So if you say, uh, ye a was sa with kangaroo, Ooh. Johnny Marks named the kangaroo uh, that thing. And so what gets this is where things get ambiguous, though, is we're like, did, is that the person who named it Khidah, or was someone named Khidah, right? And so I would say they named <coughs> that person. And then we come back later and maybe clarify, like we listen to the next. Do it on a shikhu wukha. Do it on a shikhu wukha. We'll come back to that. On Wednesday. So this we'll pick up here on Wednesday. Watch me save this thing. Save. Command S. You have to save like uh, every every minute. I don't know. Just be a habitual saver. Uh, Wednesday's class will be taught from uh, Albuquerque. So those of you who come into this room just know I won't be here. Uh, I will be, there might be some, some of you folks will be there. I might have gotten an email from a student that said, I won't be in class, I'll be in Albuquerque. I'll be teaching from Albuquerque. <laughs> 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 ah, what do they say? <laughs> I'll throw you right under the bus, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> we need a name for bus. Okay. Oh, wait. Do we have one? At I think is what we came up with. So at the thing people drive around. At the people drive things. The people, the, the thing that people drive people around. Ah, too many things. Uh, okay, never mind. Never mind. I'm not going to do it. Okay. We'll see you folks on Wednesday. Gonna cheese train. More of this and a slower recording uh, later, I promise. Gonna cheese. Gonna cheese. Gonna cheese. Gonna cheese. Good night.
is it possible or Pidach means from the dawn? That's quite possible. I mean, it could still be a name for the great flood. Right. Because Ki. But Ki is usually like Ki A. And so you don't usually see it on its own. It's a it's such a weird, such an interesting term because it's an embedded noun and a verb, but you don't usually get the noun unless it's as a verb. So ki does mean dawn in a verb, but ki a uh, is usually the name of the dawn. So it's it's, well, a, it's interesting. Except it's ki dach, and it could have been kind of the way gnushchish is actually a contraction of something longer right. that has a click in it. I wonder if ki a uh, dach ended up as ki oh, dach over. Awesome. A long time. Yeah, okay. I'm just I'm just speculating. I don't know anything. No, that's, good. that's good theorizing. Katina dot you to tongue. Jeez. Ziakin, Kunishish. <laughs>